Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph video clip. There's two things you can do immediately to make your English better. And I want to talk to you about both of these things. They're both kind of practical things, but they're very different. One is about changing simply the way you speak. That's the easy one. And the second one is about changing the way you think. So let's begin with changing the way you speak, because this is the easiest of the two, I think. If you want to communicate better, or if you feel that somehow your accent isn't right, or your voice isn't good, then it's very simple. You simply change it. Now, I have some little tips here to share with you about how you can do that in a very easy way. Listen to this. My name is Teacher Joseph and I am an English teacher. How does that sound to you? It sounds rough, huh? That's not the way I speak. Today, I'd like you to begin to notice how English people speak. Don't worry about what they're saying. It's really not that interesting anyway, I'm sure of that. But I want you to focus more on how we speak. Listen again. Hi, I'm Teacher Joseph. Did you hear a bit of a difference there? My name is Teacher Joseph and I'm an English teacher. It sounds better. It has rhythm. It has no spaces. Let's just compare the two. My name is Joseph and I am an English teacher. My name is Joseph and I'm an English teacher. So, first thing is the spaces between the words. Because the spaces between the words really are separating your words from one and another, another. Let's change that. Your spaces are separating the words one from another. Okay, so spacing, that's one. So when you get your breathing right, take a big deep breath in, push the air out in one breath and fill it with sound. The problem is, when many of us are breathing these days, we often hold our breath inside. This is a much bigger problem than simply learning English. It's just we take a breath in and then we're afraid and tense and we have to finish a project and the boss needs this done. And we, we don't express. We have all this stuff in us and our air is held. And we take short breaths. If you take a big deep breath in and push the air out, just try that a few times with me and see how relaxing it is. Take a big deep breath in and out. Amazing. It can take up to 20 seconds to really release all your breath out there. Now, this is something which, if you get into the habit of doing it, can be very relaxing. Just deep breath in. 
Hi, my name is Teacher Joseph and I'm an English teacher and I'm not going to stop breathing until all the air has gone or I reach the end of a sentence. So I filled up all of my air. I filled up all of my breath with words. The next thing is intonation. Hi, listen to my voice going up and down. Hi, my name is Joseph and I'm an English teacher. Compare that. My name is Joseph and I'm an English teacher. So this time we got the spacing right, but there's still no intonation. Yes, that's right. I teach English every day and I really enjoy it. I teach English every day and I really enjoy it. Do you see how easy it is just to change how you speak? The best way to do this, to really catch these points, is by simply imitating somebody else. And if you've ever had a lesson with me or you've ever heard me in a podcast, I really recommend shadowing. Take a voice like mine and just copy it. Notice where I'm breathing and where I'm not breathing. Don't try to translate anything. Just try to make my sounds. That's the best way to do it. So there we are. That's the easy part out of the way. How you can easily change how you speak. Deep breaths and push the words out on your breath and if you don't know what to say use a filler like um let me think for a moment or stretch the words secondly to use intonation hi i'm joseph and i'm an english teacher so you can hear there putting two things together breathing and intonation you've got what you want okay so that's the easy part so we spoke about better communication skills change the way you speak was the first part and now we're going to move on to the second part change the way you think now let me just begin by saying that most of you all of you who come to me are very critical about your English and I'm hearing that a lot I'm hearing how bad your English is and it's not my words saying that it's your words oh my English is terrible my English is rubbish my English is awful how do I improve first of all you must realize that by constantly going over this narrative of how bad English is, that you're creating a vacuum there. You're creating a world and you're putting yourself in it. Now, you don't need to be creating a world full of roses and little kittens and fabulous things because unfortunately, the world isn't quite like that. But what you do need to do is really begin to notice more about your negative thought patterns. Because the more you keep going over this and telling me how bad your English is, the more you're convincing yourself that it is. When you tell me your English is terrible, or when you tell other people how bad your English is, their expectations are going to be lower because they're expecting you not to have an ability. And then you say things like, wow, you know, if only I believed in myself, if only I could get this book into my head, if only I could remember this grammar into my mind, everything would be fine. You know, our minds are incredibly receptive. And if there's a reason why words don't stay in your mind, 
when you read them, it's because of maybe one or two reasons. If you're always telling yourself, oh, my English is bad, my English is bad, my English is bad, my English is bad, it will become bad and you won't remember anything. Why would you want to remember? After all, your English is bad. So there's no room there for growth. You're not allowing yourself to grow. You could begin with a few simple affirmations. Things like, my English is good, or every day my English is getting better. Now, I'm not sure if you're telling me your English is bad because I'm a teacher, or if it's just your habit to say, oh, it's awful, it's terrible. I don't know, and I don't need to know. But if you really expect it to get better, you have to allow some room there for it to improve. And with some very simple exercises, you can begin to see how good your English actually is. Now, let's just look at your idea of what learning English is. So, as I mentioned a moment ago, for some people, learning English is about the book here and getting the words into your mind here. So it's kind of like there has to be some automatic transfer. You can call it a Wi-Fi download if you want, whatever. But you're trying to get the stuff from here into here, and you're wondering why it's not working. Well, first of all, your mind is incredibly receptive, but it's not designed to have things pushed into it that you don't like. Now, I'm sorry to have to be quite blunt here about this, but the truth of the matter is, if you're doing a job that you hate, the incentive is the money. Let's say you don't like your boss. Why stay in the job? Some people do. They like to suffer. They like to be tortured. Other people, the incentive is only cash, nothing else. So with that kind of attitude, when English comes up, you're saying to yourself, oh, but I have to suffer. There's no other way. This isn't going to be fun, but I've got to sit down and study this so it goes from here to here. It doesn't actually have to be like that. What if the thing here, the book, was actually something that makes you happy? What would that be like? Imagine for a moment you're studying English with something that you actually like. What would that be like? Imagine the scenario. You see a book and you think, oh, wow, I'd love to read that in English. That would bring me so much joy. Have you ever felt like that when you're learning English? No, of course you haven't. And that's because when you look at a book in English, you think, oh, wow, well, <laughs> this is what the teacher said. This is what is recommended. This is what we're going to go through in the course. It doesn't have to be like that. When was the last time you were on holiday? I want you just to close your eyes for a moment. Picture it. You're in the hotel room, you wake up and you think, ah, oh, I have nothing planned for today. I'm going to go to the beach with a book. I'm going to go to the museum later. And I'm going to have no plans for the day. What does that feel like? Can you get into that mood just for a moment? Do you see how free your mind is? is no kids to run after no husband to cook for no wife to uh, rush home to you're free now just hold that thought for a moment 
And let's come back to English. If you could capture that moment every day as a starting point for study, what do you think that would feel like? How would that renovate your studies? Yeah, it really would allow you to see things in a clearer way. Now, I know what you're telling me. You're going to tell me, Abba, teacher Joseph, that's impossible. That's not how life is. Okay, it's true that you can't get rid of the wife or the husband and the kids. But uh, the other thing that you really could do, which wouldn't be really so hard, would be to choose a book that really brings you so much joy. Now, many of us, unfortunately, as part of our English study, we belong to this philosophy that English should be hard. It really should be. Oh, yeah, it shouldn't be fun. No, 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 no. Because that's how we were taught at school. We were taught that you face the front, you look miserable, and you shouldn't enjoy it. And the things you did enjoy at school may well have become part of your life now, but learning a second language, the way we were taught was horrible. I admit that I still remember some very basic French phrases, ou uh, la gare, I think was one. I can't remember, really. Um, I have a dog. Chien, was it? Dog? Anyway, my point is this. You won't forget, because obviously the discipline of the classroom was harsh, but it doesn't have to be like that anymore. You can actually have fun. You have the whole world sitting in front of you. You're watching me on the internet. You're one click away from another page in English over something that you actually like, whether it's cars, whether it's uh, something else, motorcycles, making dresses. What's your passion today? And how would you be able to find that? That really is the question, because once you tap into that, as I told you before, and as I'm telling you again now, it's an unstoppable force. So you need to be thinking about not what else can I torture myself with with English, but what really is going to bring me the highest level of joy. Now, once you've done that, let's just say your highest level of joy comes from cars. Then you rush out, you get the magazine about cars in English, and you try to study it, and you think, oh no, it's too hard. It's That, that could be a problem, but what you could do is you can then begin to create smaller lessons for yourself around those cars, the things which are achievable, and almost certainly the things that bring you joy. If you can't do that, ask a teacher to design a lesson for you. If you can't do that, use ChatGPT and ask it to design a lesson for you. There's all kinds of possibilities. But this idea that your English must be bad and that you must suffer when you're learning, it doesn't have to be like that, especially if you do that little exercise we were doing earlier of how you feel when you're on holiday. It only takes two minutes, you know? Just imagine yourself sitting there. There's nothing else, you know? There's no kids shouting, wife. You really need that clear mind when you come to the table of study. And I do understand that there's many things pulling at you, you know? Many things that need attention. Uh, those things, they need, well, they do need your attention as well. But uh, I think if you can just get that quiet place mentally, 
you can study, you know. It might be worth reviewing your time a little bit more to see where you can get those quiet times into your day. One thing is for sure, that is that the the quiet times that you have uh, need to be quality. It's not just about having a space in your office, especially if your office is at home and you have two kids screaming and shouting outside the door. That's not a quiet time. Quiet space, the space I'm referring to, is a mental space, not a physical space, a place where you can leave everything else and go. And this is why a lot of you who try to fit English lessons into your day, for example, meeting with boss at 1 p.m., English lesson at 2 p.m., meeting Sarah from HR at 3 p.m., project updates, I've got to address the team at 5 p.m., It never works, and it never works because you're not in the right frame of mind. Things are coming in in English and are being lost immediately because you know you're looking at your clock every two minutes. But if you get the mental space right, then it's so much easier to work with. It could mean that you have to look a little bit deeper into something like meditation, some kind of mindfulness. It doesn't have to be anything major. I'm not suggesting that you rush away, move to a mountaintop and stay there for three months, but you need to be making that mental place, a place which is free, where you're able to assess your English, you're able to see things as they are, not just the processes of doing. Um, It's really, really important. You know, one thing about British people that I've noticed is, as a group, we are really, really uncomfortable with silence. We don't like it. And many people don't have families, have few friends, uh, may not even have wider families at home, or they might be in unhappy relationships. Who knows? But what I've noticed about them is that they try to fill their time doing a lot of stuff which takes away that void of emptiness. But what I'm telling you is if you really do want to learn fast, it's the opposite. You don't try to fill that void with stuff that you don't need you actually face it and say, okay, I'm going to be silent today and learn English. I feel really sad for a friend of mine. He's running around doing everything. And if I ask him to do anything for me, oh, is it too busy? Sorry, yeah, too busy. I'm taking the kids to the swimming pool. And then after that, I have to go home and get the car repaired. After that, I have to do this, 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 and this. I have a student who tells me the same things. And he uses that as an excuse not to learn English. And I always say to him, I always say, well, where's your time for learning? And he says, I don't have any time. And I say, well you don't have any time, English isn't a priority then. Because if you're doing all these things, I'm sure you could find time for English. But if you just slow down and stop, just do nothing for even five minutes, you'll be surprised how much English you remember. Whereas if you come to an English class, and in that English class, you've just bounced out of something else, It's unlikely you're going to remember anything. You need the silence and you need the appreciation as well of that silence in order for you to learn. Without it, you'll get nowhere. I think our lives really are all focused around our jobs these days. And English, learning anything, especially something which involves uh, 
the human body, you know, something which should be using a skill, you know, I, I don't think, uh, I don't think uh, having these distractions around are very good. It needs more of your attention. And if you want the evidence of that, let me just uh, take you back to when you were a child. So remember when you were learning to ride a bike, did you say to yourself, okay, I'll ride this bike for five minutes, then I'll stop because I have to get home and do X, Y, and Z. And then I have to, after that, I have to see my mother and my father, and then I have to go to horse riding lessons. No, you were in the moment. You were lost in that second. And that's what you really need to be getting back to the full appreciation of the moment and if you can't do that there really is no point and in that full appreciation of the moment you've also got the joy of doing you have the feeling that you've achieved something and coming in that quiet state again to the teacher uh, there's going to be some recognition of improvement and the only thing that's changed is you so yeah a lot to think about that so changing your thinking is the hardest thing but it can be done and you really need to be thinking about that today this isn't just about learning english this is about you and the way you live your life and english if you really want to learn it needs that so you need to be reviewing what your priorities are, what your life is like. And if you are one of these people that's just doing too much because you really don't like doing nothing, that's okay. There are some people like that too. But uh, yeah, you need to be reviewing that a little bit, I would say. Um, take the example of a child. Uh, children generally don't care about diaries or timetables or the next meeting. Uh, they just do. And uh, let's get back to that. That's all I wanted to say today. I've gone way over my time. I wanted this to be only 15 minutes. But uh, yeah. And remember, be a bit kind to yourself today. This very constant, my English is terrible, my English is terrible. Of course, people are going to be pick up. People are going to be picking up on that, and when that happens, their expectations of you will be lower because you've told them how bad everything is in your life. So, time for you to reframe. See ya. Bye.